This is Moments with Foo with James Foo Torres, better known as Foo, the show that takes you around the world to share interviews with some of the most successful and relevant people on the planet, hear their stories, and get the most important business lessons they have learned on their road to success, and get exclusive advice on how to implement their success into your life and business. Moments with Foo is brought to you by the Strategic Advisor Board and your host, Foo. Hi, and welcome to Moments with Fu. I'm your host, James Fu Torres, but you can call me Fu, hence the name of the podcast. And today I have Jonathan Page. He is the chief visionary of In Prime Legal, and I'm going to let him tell you more about that. But first, Jonathan, how are you? Doing awesome, James. I really appreciate you having me on the show today. No, thanks. Thanks for taking the time. I mean, you have something really cool uh, that I want you to get into, right? Like just uh, innovating in this legal space. So like, that's something that definitely needs a lot of innovation, especially now with like things like, like chat GPT or just AI in general. So um, why don't you start by giving us a quick introduction about yourself and your company? Yeah, sure. In Prime Legal is the primary company. It's a full service law firm that's really focused on founders and entrepreneurs, people who are trying to make big moves in the market and they just want the right legal infrastructure in order to do that. But really, my entrepreneurial journey started with my father. When I was 24, we were at a growth conference, not with him, but with my aunt and listening to the speakers, getting excited about what they were saying. And during the during a break, we were in the hotel lobby and my aunt shared with me a story about their father. We called him Papa. And what she shared with me really changed my perspective on business and life. You see, my dad had this burning desire to go to college. So when we asked Papa for the application fee, Papa told him he was too stupid to go to college. He was too stupid. So sitting there, listening to my aunt, tears filled my eyes. I just just thought about all the people in my life who had told me I couldn't achieve something that I wanted to achieve. I thought about myself, all the excuses I had made up to that point for not achieving more. And I really just became determined to achieve every ambitious goal I set out to achieve. And so that sparked sort of this lifelong quest of reading all these personal growth books, investing in coaching, life coaching, investing in consultants, really trying to understand how to achieve breakthrough success in business and life. And that's what brought me through this entrepreneurial journey. It's why I started in Prime and why I just am relentless about uh, doing all of these other things that I feel are going to provide massive value to our community, to our customers, to the marketplace. Amazing. I love how you plug in the story. I love the why. So uh, thanks for your, for sharing that. And uh, now tell us a little bit about what makes your company so different, because I know that you have something very cool that I think uh, my, my audience will really appreciate. So I worked at Big Law. I worked on complex legal transactions. I represented pretty large companies through some pretty sophisticated deals. And that model is a fairly traditional model. You bill by the hour. You don't really know what your bill is going to be. Um, when we would get kind of a smaller or mid-sized company, it was always a surprise. And oftentimes what we would find is that even large companies that were spending hundreds of thousands of dollars with us a year would often take shortcuts, like <clears throat> download a document off the internet or uh, go to LegalZoom, even though the documents at LegalZoom were just generic documents. They're the same document for everybody because they didn't want to wait on an attorney. They didn't want to be nickeled and dime for every phone call. And so when I left that law and decided to focus on small to mid-sized businesses, when we opened our full service firm, we were really focused on how can we make this predictable so that they, you know, businesses can manage their cash flow? How can we be proactive so that we're ahead of things instead of you know, cleaning things up when bad things happen? How can we be more strategic with our clients so that we can be part of helping them achieve their business goals. And what I realized is that a lot of clients look at law as a safety net. It's insurance. It's, I'll get to it sometime later when the business is bigger, right? And then they get into these issues that can sometimes be catastrophic to the business that can literally tear the business down or suck all their time, attention, and energy into dealing with this legal form that's come up instead of dedicating their time, attention, and energy on, on the bigger vision. And what I realized is that most people don't see legal for where its true power is, which is business expansion. So instead of a safety net, how can we use 
legal to expand the business. Bill Gates is a great example. Back when Bill Gates was nobody and he was developing his operating system, Apple had already launched personal computers. They were getting traction. IBM was the big Goliath out there. The, the, the big company, the billion dollar company, slow to move, finally said, we need to catch up and get a personal computer out there. Bill Gates did something brilliant. When he partnered with IBM to put his operating system there, he negotiated a contract for exclusivity. Had Bill Gates, and he'll say this, if you were to interview Bill Gates, had he not negotiated a contract provision, a legal provision in the contract he was doing IBM that gave him exclusivity, we would not know Microsoft today. We would be thinking of IBM. All of your office products would be made by IBM because IBM could have easily uh, dominated that market. But because he had exclusivity, he ended up getting 90% market share you know, by the 1990s. So contracts and legal can be really powerful in business expansion. And so that's really kind of the focus and differentiator at our firm. I love it. I love how you um, uh, take in the proactive approach rather than the reactive approach. Mm -hmm. And that's something that is uh, is very important just in you know business and, and life in general, just rather than just reacting to everything that's happening, just be proactive and be prepared. So legal is definitely a, a, it's a, it's a part of that. Being, being proactive can be really beneficial uh and, and then uh then there is this the custom legal documents right like as the when you, you were saying about legal zoom uh, it's all like generic so uh, i know that you're kind of starting out with this but you already have some things out so can you can you tell us a little bit about that yeah so let me share with you a basic philosophy in business i think that every business if it's going to be a great business needs to be mission driven right what are you here to do how are you benefiting the lives of your customers? What contribution are you making to the world? And if you think of a business as a service, right, and you call them service businesses for a reason, if you think of it as serving other people, making their lives better in some, you know, in some way, then business has a very charitable purpose, right? Business is what is the reason we have the telephone. Business is the reason we are able to live in the houses that we live here in America. Business is the reason why we have a car to get from place to place, right? These were all business ideas that were then monetized that then led to these innovations. So it's got to be mission-led. And all of these entrepreneurs, Henry Ford, even Elon Musk, uh, Rockefeller, they all had very strong missions. You know, uh, Steve Jobs wanted to get computing power in everybody's hands, right? That's a, that's a mission-driven company, and that's how he made his decision. So when you're mission-driven, then you have a very good idea of who your target customers are. And in my, my, my philosophy is that every business should try to meet their target customers at every price point. And how do you do that? Well, you do that by having three types of services. One is your done for you services. That's what Imprime Legal is. It's a done for you service. You're obviously going to charge the most money for that. Another is to is done with you. That's where your customer does part of the work in order to get the benefit that you're trying to sell. But then you're also there to assist and help the customer do part of that work. And then the other is to do it for you. I mean, is is uh, do it yourself, the DYI. So if you have these forms of services incorporated in some way, you can advance your mission even more to more people because you've got different price points with different costs associated. It the DYI is is, is a very low cost structure. That's why you're able to charge less. The done for you is a higher cost structure, which is why you have to charge more. So we follow that same philosophy. We've got our done for you, but we developed contract sprint as sort of this side project to be able to give people access to really high quality custom legal documents that are critical for their business. That might be an employment agreement, an operating agreement if they have an LLC, a 1099 contractor agreement if they're if they're engaging contractors. Um, it's an employment agreement, uh, an employee handbook. Uh, loan documents if they are loaning money to somebody else in business. So all of these are really critical documents that we come across on a day-to-day -day basis. And oftentimes when somebody hires us in our done for you program and our in prime program, they often don't have these documents in place because they were unwilling to invest the money. So this gives people very affordable, quick access to really high quality documents that they can then use in their business. And what's great is our team reviews every submission. So when somebody does a submission, we don't just 
kind of look at it. We review it for accuracy. And if there is anything that appears inaccurate, we reach out to people and we we correct it. So it's a great program. But that's that's just kind of our first iteration where we're moving into a done with you uh, model where uh, contract sprint will be a feature and we're essentially building a platform on AI and that's currently in development. We're really excited about that product. Yeah, uh, me too. Because, uh, you know, when we talked the first time and started talking about that, it's uh, something that, I mean, that that's going with the times, which I really like uh, of of staying ahead and, and really innovating. And you're, you're being innovating already. So it's just a matter of like, well, I got to keep innovating, right? So that is something that I really like and him, giving people the option like, look, I'm a small business just kind of starting out. I don't want to spend too much money. Uh, I, I just, I just need an agreement here, you know, that, that I can, that I can get from some, from a professional. And then when I'm ready and then I'm making this money because also I protected myself properly, uh, then, then from there, it's like, look, now let me expand. Let me have you guys in my team. So I think that's something that it's a, it's a great model. I love it. I can't wait to, to see that. AI integration uh, and and how like it will guide you and send reports to you right and all that it's just making everything easier high quality uh, and you guys training it too right like there's so many so many like machine learning right with this thing there's still there's so much that there's so much potential and we're in this r big revolution like like information it's it, it was accessible and now it's like even easier and doing all these things there's gonna be a lot of policy changes and a lot of things right because there's, there's gonna be a lot of legal implications about like ai and how they are using copyrighted content and you know so there's all that that is coming so that's the that's that's pretty pretty cool that that we're going in that direction so um you know what i guess from a legal standpoint i just kind of got me thinking i what 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 is your take on uh on ai using information and what do you see what do you see things going forward at least you know what's your hot take on it so i think first and foremost these companies you know that have created these large language models and created this artificial intelligence their philosophy is move first and clean up later right mm -hmm. and really when you're in innovation you've got to do that i'm not saying you shouldn't try to move by mitigating your liability but the copyright issues, um, the trademark issues, the intellectual property issues are so complex that they sat around trying to figure all that first, they would have never created AI, right? So it's this move first mentality. Let's let's get it built. Let's put it out there. Um, let's try to do it responsibly. But we understand that we're going to be you know dealing with the intellectual property implications for years to come. So. There's definitely exceptions with intellectual property. You know, when you, in, in a way, nothing's original, right? It's it's being able to take something and putting your own spin on it. So I think that's sort of the gray area that they're in is when AI produces something, is this something that, yes, they were taking things that were are, already existed that may have been copyrighted in its original form, but it's manip not manipulated it, but it's um, curated it in such a way that it's now original, right? It's now a different enough from its original form that it doesn't infringe on copyright. I mean, those are, that's really the kind of the gray area that that lawyers and um, the uh, profession is going to be looking at for for years to come. Yeah, yeah, and, and that's something. Uh, uh, thanks for for giving me that that take, especially you know just being from from the legal industry, uh, because look, for my girlfriend is a graphic designer, and. She takes like okay, I I'll go to Google, go to whatever, and see pictures, and then she sometimes like even like traces certain parts and stuff. But then she always just gives it her own spin to make it hers, right? Mm -hmm. Um. So, and 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 nobody questions that that's her original thing, right? Uh. Um. Uh, you know, well, somebody could, but you know what I mean. Like it, it's it's a normal art thing like you see something it, it's so hard to just like okay let me just create this thing out of my like, thin air like if i've never seen it right and, and, and you know some people can get abstract and get stuff but everything comes from an inspiration right because if you you can be able to visualize it you you're not going to be able to to really make it come to life right to, through through art so 
So that that's the thing, right? It's a, it's a matter of like, if it's 30% different or more, is it, is it really a copy, right? It, so there's a lot of gray areas and stuff, but um, I think that um, as long as it's, I mean, it's different, it's different, right? Like uh, it, it's just a matter of like, if it's a sample or something, right? Like how how exactly you took as a, a, a single component of it. Maybe like if it gets segmented, I guess uh, there's certain things. So we'll see how that goes. But thank you for for giving me uh, that that input. I really appreciate it. So yeah, I mean we've got an example which kind of shows the the legal strategy and how business can be used for expansion. One of our clients that's in our done for you program and our in prime program. When he started with us, he was just a small company. And he wanted to exit at nine figures. That was like his big thing. And so we helped him roll up three other companies in his space. And uh, he is about to get acquired for nine figures. Um, we were working on the uh, closing documents as we speak. We've been through like six months of due diligence and they will be closing within the next 30 days. And he's going to have a really big check. Um, but what, what's interesting is during that process of him being in our program, they did a rebrand. And the way that they did their rebrand initially is they got something off a of Shutterstock. And what they didn't realize is that they could, and it was, uh, that was their logo. Like they took something off a of Shutterstock. Now they paid for it, but that license didn't give them the ability to really own that logo and use it in the ways that they wanted. And essentially the Shutterstock person reached out to them through Shutterstock or Shutterstock representative and said, but you can have it for like $50,000, some, some like enormous price. Like if you pay 50,000 to the artist, they'll let you have it. So they contacted us. This is where AI is not going to be able to help, right? This is where a business attorney still, it can provide a ton of value. And so we stepped in and said, well, why don't you, why don't you do this? What you want to make sure is that it's an original art that you're not copying somebody else. So I want you to go on Fiverr. I want you to find five artists that you like, look at their uh, logos. They're going to charge you about a hundred dollars. And they're going to give you like three different versions. So now you got five. That's going to give you three times five, which is 15 to choose from, right? Now they're going to ask you what you're looking for. What you don't do is take the Shutterstock picture that you got and give that to them. But what I want you to do is describe it in words. But don't describe it like this is their image. Just say, we're looking for something that's circular and it's got these kind of colors and it's got this. Uh, just kind of give a description you know, as if you were remember, as if you had seen this logo in your mind and you were just describing what you saw. Then when they produce it, what they're going to produce is original because of your communication, because you have a specific like, you know, purchase order for this logo with these artists, right? Or these, these, uh, these um, graphic designers on Fiverr. Um, and because they produced it from that description and there, and there's no way, and it's impossible for them to say that they actually looked at the Shutterstock image that you're being that you would be accused of, you know, misappropriating. Um, what they're going to produce for you is going to be very original, but I bet it's going to be similar to what you already had. And sure enough, what was they picked one of those logos. It was similar enough, and um, they were able to do the rebrand because they had already launched it with the the logo. They were able to quickly replace the logo, and there was no issue to their market. Nobody was confused, um, and they were able to avoid you know, uh, a big misappropriation claim, which of course, when they're going through this kind of transaction and this artist learns about it, there's going to have a, there's going to be a big demand letter, right? So you want to make sure when you're going through a transaction of that size that you, you know, you're representing that you own everything, you're representing that it's your intellectual property. And so this was a, a solution. Now, AI is never going to be able to do that. You're not going to be able to go to AI and say, hey, this is my issue. And then AI is going to give you that exact, you know, unless it's been weighted by us, to do that in that situation. And so our hope is when we develop this AI bot, because it's not scraping the internet, right? It's tuning our data set for the specific users we have, which we feel our data set's much better than what you would get off the internet. Um, and we're able, every situation we deal with like, like this, we're able to go back in and train that AI bot. So the next time the AI bot gets something similar to that, they'll be able to respond to it. So. You know, that's the cool thing. It's like, how do we, you know, our real mission is to try to curate or, or to get the best, the best data set on legal intelligence to win the AI category so that we really can provide, you know, quick, uh, convenient, easy access to, to the best legal intelligence for the specific situation that the client's going through.
That I love it. I love it. That's exactly where my mind goes when I think about AI. It's a matter of like, well, I think about well, is a uh, in the in the in the law industry like with you guys. So it will be like first, give them all the laws, right? Like, it make sure that they know the literature, right, and everything, and then you guys plug in the strategies. And it's like that way. It's it becomes like a directory of not only the the actual law, but then actually the the how to do the strategy right and that that's something that can be extremely powerful tool to save time to be more accurate you know and and, and on that note i just got thinking about something that i, that I really want to see soon hopefully is starting implementing ai and and kind of robots and stuff into into sports because you know all the missed calls that that happens and stuff like that shouldn't happen if we can't right. avoid it like that shouldn't be part of the game it was part of the game, but it shouldn't be part of the game forever. It's like, oh, this guy, like, did they say that he was out of bounds, but he wasn't, or he was out of bounds, but he wasn't called. Like, no, just like have it. Have, the technology is that is out there already, right? So it's the same thing of 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 like in like legal, right? Like, it's just like uh, I like I love sports. I'm a very competitive guy, so like I I like comparing things, uh, everything with sports. So, um, like you know, if you're out of out of line or stuff, like we have the technology to to make sure to catch things or the other way around. Like it, it was, it, you're actually didn't. Right. So that's what I like. So thank you. Thank you for this. I mean, this has been extremely valuable. I know I've been learning and I really like this conversation. So thank you for taking the time to do this conversation with me. Absolutely. So I know there's going to be some people that are going to be like, Hey, like this guy looks super awesome. I want to keep track to see that AI coming out. or maybe even want to get some like custom legal documents of the things that you already have. Um, so how can people find you? So contract sprint.com is the custom legal document platform. And if you go there, uh, the, some of the documents are no charge, but if there is a charge, just put an F O O and you'll get a 40% discount on any of the documents we get there, basically making them nearly free. Um, and we're willing to do that, you know, for like the next three months, because we're still in beta, we're still testing. Every time someone does a submission, um, we're reviewing it very carefully because we really want to work out any kinks. It's actually better for the user because they do a submission. They've got a whole legal team looking at the document that, that they submitted um, because we're trying to iterate on it. And so that's a, a great way to, to get in contact with us. Um, and then people can just reach out to me directly, Jonathan at inprimelegal.com, inprimelegal.com. And would, I'm always happy to have a conversation with people about what they're doing and how they're shaking up the world. Awesome. I like it. Thanks for giving that that discount FOO, right? Foo, um, you can get that discount code. Um, so yeah, go, go ahead and take advantage of this almost free pre part of the beta testing. I mean, that's something extremely valuable for a cheap price, right? So like, it's a pretty, pretty good price, get early and, uh, enjoy the benefits. Right. So, uh, wow. Having a, a, like being able to submit it, it's like, Hey, this is what I'm actually using. And then people like that. So that's just a big thing, right? There's one thing to, Hey, there's a template here, very generic to, Oh, this is custom. Plus, you can submit it, and we'll give you feedback because we're in yeah. that state. So that that's that's super powerful. So, thanks again, uh, Jonathan. This has been amazing. I I, I really love this, and uh, looking forward to make a, a deeper connection with you and, and see uh, how we can collaborate and other things. Awesome. <laughs> so this was Jonathan Page and James Fu Torres, better known as Fu, and this is us signing off. Thanks for listening to Moments with Foo with your host, Foo. Please leave your feedback and visit strategicadvisorboard.com to get the latest and greatest business advisement on the planet. Follow us on social media for updates and we will see you on the next episode.